welcome to our audience again. Welcome to Black History Entertainment, another program um, on The Voice. And today we'll be doing another segment of our financial piece with uh, Jacob Van der Poy. The last, um, uh, the segment that we did before, you guys oh, did very well. And I must say thanks to all the listeners who tuned in and participated in uh, listening to the program um, and watching the program on YouTube also. And so, I, you know, a very big shout out to all the fans and for those who are new and will be listening to this segment, stay tuned and continue to watching our programming. But for this particular segment, which is a, which we are just going to piggyback on where we left off first, we dealt with credit and um, how to build your credit, what is credit, we defined that for you. And then we gave you the full explanation of how all of those things come together to give you a steady pathway to, 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 to gain and grow wealth and maintain that wealth building um, partnership that you need for your life and career and family. So today we are gonna deal with the other piece where we talk about um, retirement. And retirement comes in in two big stages. But I'm going to just say one is the the spiritual retirement and the physical retirement. And both of them cost money. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Even going out the door into the grave, it's still going to cost us. So we want to be prepared one way or the other. Not that I'm, I'm putting any gloom, but guess what? In the, in, in, the, in the very same atmosphere where it is inevitable that we will someday depart this world it is inevitable if we live long enough and be healthy enough we will want to retire from our normal duties and contribution within the workforce so this evening again we have the expert with us here um that is none other than jacob van der Poy, and he's gonna walk us through the entire uh area of dealing with retirement and balancing all of that and get us through up to that part. So I will now go ahead and turn it over to Mr. Jacob Von der Poy. And I, uh, I'm glad to have you back again here with us with Black History. And you are one of our crucial teammates. And uh, we are happy to have you. And I'm sure the uh, our guest is also looking forward since, the, the, since we did so well with the first um, section of the financial piece. So, Mr. Von der Poy, I have a number of questions here for you that I'm excited about, and I'm going to turn this microphone over to you to talk to our wonderful guests and listeners and audience and everyone out there on all social media platforms. Welcome, Mr. Von der Poy. Thank you. Thank you, Owen. You are so kind. I <laughs> uh, appreciate the uh, opportunity, and I hope that uh, this time we are able to build on where we started. Definitely. Um, budgeting uh, for the household, uh, having credit knowledge and expanding your credit knowledge. And the fact that if you do not have credit, especially in this society, uh, you get penalized for not having credit or not having credit knowledge. So it's imperative that we all take the time to, um, you know, talk to other bankers or uh, friends and acquaintances who have the credit knowledge or read some books around it so that we can build on that uh, and that is how we as a people uh, can advance the cause and create wealth for ourselves. Uh, today, uh, like Owen Radley said, we're going to touch on uh, retirement. Uh, retirement is a topic that is on almost everybody's mind. Right. And, and we have a lot. We have less time. Uh, that information. So right, that we're going to try and pick and choose. Mm -hmm. and, and hopefully by the time we part ways tonight, uh, I'll leave you some nuggets of knowledge for you to expand on. Right. So that brings us to my first question. And my first question will be to explain to the audience um, what is retirement and when does it start? Thank you. So retirement technically is when an individual uh, has gotten to a stage where they no longer need their active income to supplement their lifestyle. Uh, and I use the term active income uh, cautiously. I say that because, um, sorry, advisedly. I say that because there's also a thing called passive income. 
uh, where if you do an investment, uh, the returns from those investments are turned passive. That means you don't have to do a nine to five, perhaps run a business, so actively go about duties and plan planning and strategizing to earn an income uh, to supplement your lifestyle. And so that's the technical definition for retirement. Mm -hmm. However, I also like to state that retirement means different things to different people. Owen spoke about spiritual retirement, huh, right? <laughs> Right, and, <laughs> and then physical retirement. We'll, right. we'll do the physical part today, right? right, right <laughs> but right. yes, um, for some folks, retirement might mean that uh, they have found their calling in life, if it is to serve the Lord or uh, pursue a passion. I don't know, I, I like to retire uh, and teach. Uh, for instance, you know, others who like to retire and, and, and do their golf games, you know, and yet others who do their speed cards and a host of other things, others want to travel. And so some folks find their calling, find their passion and decide that for the remainder of their life, um, on Mother Earth, they're going to dedicate it to that. And the uh, so-called blue color, white color jobs that we're doing is no longer a place for them. Uh, but to do that, you have to be able to have a nest egg to finance that passion or that hobby or um, take care of the people around you. Yeah. Uh, so retirement is a very important thing. I would say very seriously that if you fail to plan for retirement, you have planned to fail for retirement. Why do I say that? Uh, we are not islands on our own, right? We live with people. We have either spouses, family, uh, relations, and people who uh, care for us. And so even if you don't care for yourself and you think that you go out to the bank, you don't want to save anything, uh, uh, it might affect the people around you. So if you love the people, you don't love yourself, but you love the people around you, it behoves that you... Um, make it a point to make an appointment with a financial planner or financial advisor. Uh, these individuals have studied this retirement planning process uh, for their entire life and they're able to craft uh, a bespoke plan which suits your particular needs uh, to each their own. Uh, as Owen said earlier on, as I said earlier on, retirement is different for different people. We have different streams of income, different levels of income. And so therefore you need to have an advisor who understand the uh, granular details of your own um, active income, passive income strategies, and craft a plan for you so that come retirement, you'll be able to maintain the lifestyle that you intend to maintain. Um, it also leads me to, you said when you retire, right? Is, is that what you said? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, and I had a discussion with Owen some time ago that um, retirement age for the most part in the United States is a reflection of the Social Security Administration policy. Now you can go to ssa.gov and get all this information, but the policy of Social Security uh, says that you need to contribute to what we call 40 credits or roughly 10 years into the Social Security program for you to start getting benefits. And by benefits, I mean getting a payout for the remainder of your life. Right. Uh, on this. Now the policy stipulates that the payout start from 62. Now, if you do not take it at 62 and you decide to drag it out, it peaks at 67, right? Most people try to uh, do it in the middle ground, right? That's around 65 so you can get a decent amount. So let's say you're supposed to get it at 62, you decide not to do it, but drag it to 67, and the returns that you get at 67 definitely higher than 62 because you waited an extra five years and the nest egg that you had has been invested and has grown and so therefore you get more at home. When you sit with your advisor, he's able to uh, do a calculus of uh, how much or project how much you'll be earning uh, when you retire, if you guys agree on the age. Right. And you can compare the, how far that, what, you, what you're getting from Social Security. So I use an example. Let's say you're getting 3,200 from Social Security, all right? Mm -hmm. But your lifestyle and your household expenses is somewhere in the region of about 5,000. You have a deficit of uh, 1,800. If you sit with a planner and you identify that deficit of 1800, right. the, the planner can then help you craft a plan mm -hmm. 
so that cam retirement, you will have a nest egg separate from social security, uh, probably from your pension or your 401k or your Roth IRA to bridge that gap. Right. So, you know? so I'm going to also say this, because you mentioned something earlier on in terms of looking at the retirement age, especially in the United States that, you know, is between 65. And I think um, if I, my memory serves me right, the full retirement kicks in at age 67. And so if you take an earlier retirement, your social security um, returns or earnings will be a little bit less. But also just to, just to add a little note to that in that, in that just to say, part of being able to work a little longer also will be as a direct result of good health because if you are not in good health and you didn't take care of yourself while you're earning along with doing all the other things for your planning retirement then it would be difficult for you to be able to want to extend that retirement age to get that additional income by another three to four years yes. you're about you know what i'm saying so it brings me to another point mr wonder boy that um i want to ask and that is you know everybody spends but looking at the ones that most people when we spend and you earn and you have debts and also you are not sure you know how to do manage all of these debts and you want to actually um get into the retirement planning and, and taking you yourself down that road you know, explain how we can navigate that territory by, you know, you being in debt, you being having to spend, whether it's uh, on, a, on, a, on a normal level, which is your regular bill, uh, and, and, and there comes the unexpected spending, you know what I'm saying? Walk us through that and, 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 and talk to our listeners and explain how they can manage that delicate dance there. So the truth is that everybody has debt, you know, couple of, uh, about a decade or so ago, one of my favorite um, authors uh, and economists, Joseph Stiglitz, wrote a paper on um, the transition from uh, our pension funds to what we call uh, defined benefits plans, defined benefit contributions, and a host of other, other things. And so the, the, some of my colleagues who are a little more advanced in age do have pensions, which is a much better retirement plan. Mm -hmm. uh, than what we have right now, which is the 401ks. Right. Uh, and and he, he made a distinction uh, that uh, those pensions would not realistically be able to pay out. And so therefore, corporations who were helping fund these um, uh, uh, pension plans needed to make an adjustment so that it will be, it will, it will be viable going forward. And okay. so today we have what we call the 401ks, the IRAs, the Roth, I, uh, the Roth IRAs, and a host of other derivatives of investment der derivatives, which will help us uh, chart that um, plan. Now, to your earlier question about being in debt, we all have debts. Definitely. We all. <laughs> and another heard. paper, actually, another paper that I read by, um, Neil Gabler, uh, uh, he, 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 he quoted, he, he had a stat, statistics that the average American or oh, 40% of Americans couldn't come up with $400 in an emergency. Think about that. I say that not to make you feel bad, but to, for you to understand that we're all in this together. Right. I've yourself. been there. You know, there are times when folks who you will come across who live in the million dollar mansions or own these right. businesses have times when they can't come up with four hundred dollars in an emergency right and, and they're hard working people you know what i'm saying and they're paying their taxes they are doing everything right yes. but because of circumstances and, of, and like you said debt it is difficult yes. in a crisis sometimes to find that four hundred dollars exactly yeah. so 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 debt is across board everybody has a debt to manage right you don't you haven't tried mm -hmm. <laughs> so so the key is to is to make it a point, meet with your advisor, have a plan in place. These plans um, are made for 20, 30, sometimes 40 years, right? right? It's a long-term plan. plan During that time, you will have your financial trials and tribulations. Nobody right. says what can happen. The right. key is to have a plan in place. That plan will project how you will live 10, 20, 30, 40 years down the line when you've decided to exit the active workforce. Right. 
And what that plan does is that it takes your current income, mm -hmm. projects your future income, and hives up what you need to put away today so that tomorrow when you decide to retire, what you put away today would have grown mm -hmm. and can earn you some income. Now, I would emphasize that the, the more you put away today, the better it will because there's something called the time value of money. Right. So the longer the funds are sitting in your investment accounts, uh, the more interest they accrue. Mm -hmm. Okay, a dollar today is worth more than a dollar tomorrow, they say, right? That proverbial, right. Uh, that proverbial terms is very true. And so if you start retirement early, matter of fact, if you are a teenager or in your 20s and you're listening and you are under the power of my voice, I say to you, even if you're earning a thousand dollars a month, put something away because that hundred dollars or fifty dollars that you put away when you're in your 20s, by the time you get to your 60s, that would will be about a hundred folds Definitely. and it'll pay you more than when you start doing it when you're 60 or 50 or 40. Definitely. And I want to, so I want to, I, I want to chime in there with you a little bit and say for the, for young people, when they think, because we were all there and looking at us now, we are roughly, we are in our fifties onwards. And then back then in your twenties, someone said to you, man, 20 years from now, you go, what are you crazy? 20 who? You know what I'm saying? But yes. then when we, at, when we are at this stage and you look back, you realize how fast 20 years went by. So like you said, for young people who are thinking about retirement, they should make it a priority and not just a thought. You know what I'm saying? Put yeah. that and make that a part of your life, their everyday discussion looking forward because those 20, 30 years are going to go by. And you know, you see that very quickly when you have a child and you, that child is just born and you're playing with that baby and that baby is dependent on you and hanging on to your, your trousers and stuff like that. And then you turn around and you look and that child is telling you goodbye or you're telling that child, hey, it's time for you to go. That child would have gone through 20 years. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. therefore, it's crucial that young people or people in general definitely take this serious and make preparations for those years that is coming up on us like a whirlwind. Yes. And, and for the parents who are also listening to us, it is imperative that you educate your kids to start investing early, right? And so I probably started investing at a later stage than I should have. I started investing from my late 20s and early 30s. But today, I'll educate my son to start very early. If she, he can start in his teens, I will help him do that because of the power of the time value of money, one. Right. Second thing is that you need to equip these children with the financial skills that they need to survive in society. This society is brutal. Mm -hmm. And so if you are not equipped with information, it will penalize you. If it's not today, it's gonna happen at some time in the future. Some, some so, so you need to do that. Definitely. Apart from that, uh, I did say, if you, plan to, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. I say that seriously because if you teach your kids today to start investing, they will see the value of that investment earlier than we probably did. And so therefore they will carry on. 